Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk to you about a very very important topic in corporate finance which is the topic of capital structure. So I'm going to do two main things. First, at a very high level I'm going to tell you well what is capital structure but then more importantly I'm going to talk to you about you know what is the main question that we're trying to answer when we're studying capital structure. Alright first, what is capital structure? Well that's actually easy. If you take a look at the balance sheet, this is a typical balance sheet structure. On the left hand side you have assets. Assets represent where all the money is going. And if money is going somewhere, then it's coming from somewhere, which represents the right hand side of the balance sheet. Money mostly comes in two ways, either debt or equity. The right hand side of the balance sheet essentially represents capital structure. In other words, capital structure refers to how much debt or how much equity you have as you are funding your different investments. Then within this you can ask do I have more bank debt versus you know if you're a publicly traded company do I have more bonds and then there are different ways in which you can have equity. There's common stock, there's preferred stock. My point is that your capital structure essentially refers to how the capital is structured to support your assets or to support your business. Okay, so now what is the question of capital structure? Well, when we're studying capital structure, we're trying to understand is there a way in which we should optimally structure the right hand side of the balance sheet? In other words, is there some optimal way in which we should fund our assets? Now you might be asking, well, what does optimal mean? Well, to answer that question, let's actually go back to the fundamentals. Imagine that you are investing in some projects or some asset, say a restaurant, and you have a sense of what are the financial cash flows that you are going to get from investing in this restaurant, say in year one, and then financial cash flows in year two, you know, so on and so forth. Now, if you have a sense of these cash flows for the next few years and you're trying to determine whether this is a worthwhile investment to do, what do you do? You typically calculate the net present value. Very good. So NPV. And how do you calculate the NPV? Well, one thing that you need is financial cash flows. What's the other thing you need? You're right, some discount rate. And the discount rate that you use represents the weighted average cost of capital. In other words, if you are funding this investment using debt and some equity, let's suppose that you can get debt at some cost, call it RB. And similarly, you can think of RS as some cost of equity. Uh, you may recall that there is something called the weighted average cost of capital that you calculate, also called the WAC. WAC is just, well, taking a weighted average. If B represents the value of debt, on your balance sheet and S represents the value of equity on your balance sheet. WAC says well take B over B plus S into the cost of debt. Actually this gets multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate and plus S over B plus S into the cost of equity. The main point here is that when you're calculating the net present value you take financial cash flows and then you discount at your cost of capital, however much is capital costing you. And to the extent that capital is taking two main forms, debt and equity, you take a weighted average. So you do one plus the weighted average cost of capital here, and then you will discount financial cash flow in year two at one plus the WAC in squared, you know, and so on and so forth however many cash flows you have, you discount this, and you figure out NPV. Now, all else equal, we like projects which have high net present value. The higher the net present value, the better the project, right? Now, think about it. How can you get a project which has a high net present value? One, the higher the expected cash flows, the higher the NPV. However, and this is the key, if the cash flows remain the same, another way to increase the net present value of the project is if you can lower the weighted average cost of capital, right? The lower the denominator, the higher this number is going to be. And if you take a look at the weighted average cost of capital, what determines it? If you look at the formula, it's the fraction of debt, you know, as a fraction of the total capital, and then the fraction of equity and then the costs of debt and the costs of equity. And that therefore essentially is the question of capital structure. 
given a certain type of asset or assets that we're investing in, can we increase value by lowering our WAC? In fact, going back to the idea of optimal, when we say, is there an optimal capital structure? What we're really asking is that, is there a capital structure that results in the lowest weighted average cost of capital or where the WAC is minimized? And it turns out the two very famous financial economists, Modigliani and Miller, actually studied this very question back in 1958. And they put forth two very, very important propositions called MM1 and MM2. MM stands for Modigliani and Miller. So Modigliani and Miller Proposition 1 and Proposition 2. And these are exactly the propositions that I'm going to talk about in follow-up videos. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.